a lot of what I try to do in sharing all of this that you see, the background and the computer here, is the reality of what you can do better than what I do with the least of these things that you see around me. I mean, this is obviously my window planter that when my landlord, unfortunately, took exception with me putting some little shells in the windows, they said that they didn't want to see them and that they didn't want to view them and that it was, they wanted everything to look uniform so that if you had your window open, you can't be able to see in. And they wanted the blind shut at times and wanted everything to look exactly the same to all the windows, except the only person they picked on was me to remove that which they could see because the other apartments that they left and still haven't changed haven't complied. So do I take exception with that? Not really. Because you see, God chooses whom he uses. It's not our choice, really. It's We make ourselves available and then God says, Okay, I've got all these people available. Now, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro looking for whose heart is perfect towards him that he may act on their behalf, that he may be strong for them, that he may be their deliverer, that he may be their God. So, for me, well, you know, these are the plants that I grow and I distribute throughout my house, you know, and You've seen them as I've panned and I've shown different parts of my house and reveal the apartment. But the reason why I do that is because in me there is nothing. I mean, sure, you know, we could sit down and, you know, make a professional studio and reach out to some video ministry, you know, and come up with the camera and the lighting and the setting and the perfect little way with which, you know, to present some gospel message to you and come up with devotionals that would be, oh, so perfect with music backgrounds and we would cut them up and we would design them like I've done for ministries and make them into such a perfect little idol for you to watch. But that is not what God said for me to do. Because, you see, God wanted me to be as real with you as I am with him, as he is with me. I don't exaggerate. I don't create something that isn't here. I don't try to pretend that, oh, you know what? There's dust on the top of my computer. I don't pretend there isn't. Oh, I drink Pepsi. I'm not a health nut. And I enjoy it. <laughs> I don't put on pretension because it's my contention that God meets you where you're at. God loves you the way you are. God is changing you, but not the outside. He's rearranging the inside to make for him a tabernacle that he might dwell in, that he might come out at moments of inspiration to cause you to lose your perspiration of we're doing works of righteousness, which you think you've done for him but rather turn you into a relationship person that you go, oh, I didn't know, but wow, look, God was in that. Oh, I had known, except that I had gone there and done that to find that God was there too. Oh, I didn't know that God could minister to those people. Oh, I didn't know that God could use those people. I didn't know that. Why not? God is God. And it's always been my presentation that God can do whatever he wants to do. God can use a computer. God can use a person. God could use you. God can use me. God can use anything he wants to. God even used a jackass. God used a donkey. So, pardon me, but I hope in these discoveries of how all of this is made, you realize that God uses whom he chooses. He can do anything he wants to, whenever he wants to, however he wants to. He can use me today, and I can speak to thousands and minister around the world because of the internet. And then tomorrow he could say, no, and nobody would dare view or even click on the video to see it. So, should we be so consumed with ourselves that we think that we're something special? 
I mean, are we something special? Are we really that important? <laughs> No. The reality is, you're not so special. You're a sinner saved by grace. God loves you. God thinks you're special because he designed you. God thinks you're unique and different than any other person in the universe because he died for you. But if you don't have a personal relationship with him, if you don't have a dynamic one-on-one -on -one talking back and forth with him, if you are kind of like, you know, hey, I'd like to get you to know a little better, then maybe you're not so special. Maybe you're just like all those that are heading for hell in a handbasket and choosing to go to hell than to spend time in heaven with Jesus. Because God isn't going to force anyone to go where they don't want to be. And a lot of what we do now determines where we're going to be then. Now, you can't earn your way there. No. You can't enhance your acceptance there. No, but you can develop a personal relationship so you're prepared to be there. Because, frankly, God wants to spend time with you. Just like I said, in a more intimate, a more personable, a more detailed way than just being a internet junkie who's playing on the internet, moving his mouse around, you know, and kind of going, Oh yeah, see, I'm a Christian. I'm playing ding ding. You know, I'm a geek geek, you know, and I have my mouse going all over the house. No. God wants you to be intimate and real, to touch the lives of a person that if you are on the internet, if you are touching people, not only are you causing them to be inspired, but their heart as they look on the internet, as they read the words that you say, as they deal with the things that you've typed in, as they become responsive to the Holy Spirit coming inside them based upon what they've seen through the words that they hear as they watch the videos, as they are enveloped in all that God wants from them from above, then He literally will turn their focus of attention on God Himself. You have that ability. You are the one. God chooses whom He uses. And he doesn't use who abuses what he uses. I'm sorry. God wants you to be maybe an internet geek. Maybe a, a vid freak. You know, you're, you're freakish on videos and you like doing these things. You know, so you make them oh so professional. Good. Praise the Lord. Do it. <laughs> but be real. Share what you are. Care who they are. Care who these people are that you can't see, touch, or feel or can you, on the internet. Know that the ministry that you've chosen to be a part of is the one that God chose you for, not you chose to be. Because if you're choosing for yourself, you're missing the point, and you've lost your way. So repent. Turn around. Repentance is a big theological term, but just repenting means to turn. That's all it means. Just turn from one direction, go the other direction. That's all. Don't get all weirdo about it. Just do it. It's that simple. Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the perfect, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is it? Presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. As you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now, as opposed to then, yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. In Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, and as many as walk according to this rule, Peace be on them, and mercy, for they have received grace for grace, and mercy for mercy. For it is not a matter of the law, or else they would be law for law, legalism for legalism, righteousness for their seemingly righteousness. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. 
I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And though it's whoever you shall ask of my Father my name, he may give it to you. So you see, the fruit isn't really the ministry of thousands of people coming to Jesus and saying, oh, I swear, this is my first time coming to God, and I'm just giving my life and dedicated to Jesus, and I, I confess the fact that I'm a sinner and I know I'm saved by grace. Yeah, right, sure, okay, fine. <laughs> but what is the fruit? Is it not the peaceable, passable fruit of the Spirit that passes all understanding, that is the love that you're teaching others to love because you're making disciples after Jesus? Isn't that what he said to do? Make disciples and teach all nations? Is it the joy that you're teaching people how to enjoy themselves with by having a personal relationship with Jesus? Is it the love and the joy and the peace that passes all understanding, knowing that whether they live or whether they die, they live unto God and they die unto God, and God will restore them unto right relationship with them, even when they fall down, and that should they live or die, that they would go to be with the Lord, so they would not be left as orphans, but rather would be redeemed by Jesus himself, for they are his. Have you taught others that? Is that not the fruit that God is talking about? I think so. What do you think? I sought him, but I found him not. Return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us by your grace. For graciously we have been always in your presence by your grace we have been saved by your grace you have had mercy upon us now turn us again unto thee O Lord and cause us to be forgiven for th against thee and thee alone have we sinned and against you and you alone have we caused ourselves to be removed from your presence now God Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation and fill us again with your Holy Spirit that we walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit let no man, when he is tempted, say, I am tempted of God. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, 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 I say on the Lord. It is a good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. For in due time he shall reap that fruit of his faith. Shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Truly my soul waits upon God, and from him cometh my salvation. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is not from man, but my expectation, my confident realization is from him. So in all these things, it is he that worketh both to do and to will of his good pleasure. So all we need do is to turn from the direction of our heart, from the abstractions and distractions of the world and its ways and give it to God and let him in his way take you from inside out to reach out to those who might need to hear a word from God from you because whom the Lord chooses he uses and if God chose you for salvation and don't think you can sit on it, because whom the Lord uses is the person he chooses.